Good evening, a very warm welcome to the Brighton Centre for indoor cricket and the final of the Wadham Stringer Trophy, Kent versus Essex. A magnificent final in prospect, but before we see the action, let's just explain the rules of the competition. It's seven aside, scoring can be a little bit complicated, but these are the basic points. Each side bats for 12 overs, unless of course they're bowled out before that. And each bowler is allowed a maximum of three overs three overs only. Now this is how you score runs. There is only one boundary, the wall beyond the bowler. If you hit the ball against that wall without bouncing, it's four runs. And if it bounces, it's six. So the opposite then of conventional cricket, four in the air, six along the ground. The batsman can run at any time, but here again there is a difference from normal cricket because every time the batsmen cross, it's worth two. In other words, all runs between the wickets count double. And if the ball happens to hit the side walls while the batsmen are running, then that single counts as well. It's added to the batsmen's runs. The dismissals, they're the same as in conventional cricket, except I should tell you that batsmen can be caught off both of the side walls and also off the back wall uh, behind the wicketkeeper. Right, on then with this final, Kent against Essex. Kent, of course, who put out Hampshire, the old rivals, in the semi-final. Well, commentary is from Bob Willis of Warwickshire in England, and he's now with Neil Durden-Smith as Graham Gooch leads out the Essex team. Graham Gooch, of course, one of those touring players in South Africa who now face a three-year test ban. So Graham Gooch and Brian Hardy coming out to open the Essex innings in this Wadham Stringer Trophy final. And we're going to see Chris Taveray opening the bowling for Kent, as he did in the semi-final very successfully. He got a wicket in his only over, the first over of the innings. Kent having beaten Hampshire pretty comprehensively in their semi-final. Hampshire scored 54 and Kent winning the match with a score of 56 for two. Now here are the two sides, two extremely strong sides, packed with batting and a lot of bowling, and you'll see some surprising bowlers in this competition. And the first one is going to be Chris Taveray, who is a very occasional bowler, but pretty effective in this competition. He's going to bowl the first ball now to Graham Gooch. And Gooch off the mark there, just back with a square and nearly an overthrow but getting three runs for it because the ball hit the side ball side ball there in front of uh, square position on the offside and the batsman crossed for two so a total of three Tavery now bowling the second ball to Brian Hardy and getting two runs there because if the ball hits the board behind the wicket the run doesn't count for hitting the board but if the batsman cross they get two runs. So Essex off to a good start, five runs in two balls. And that's out. That's the one they wanted. Graham Gooch getting a short ball outside the off stump and he's well caught by Chris Cowdery standing in front of the scoreboard. And that's a tremendous start for Kent. Graham Gooch should be very disappointed with this shot. The ball's outside the off stump and it's a very half-hearted effort and he just guided straight into the fielder's hands and that's a tremendous start for Kent. So then an early blow there for Essex with Graham Gooch going in the first over. But they gradually began to recover and by the seventh over began to look as though they were going to be set for a really good score. We join it now in the eighth over and they're now 69 for one. And there's Azif, the Kent captain who must be wondering what he can do next to try and break this partnership. Well, it's Richard Ellison, the new bowler, and starting with a wide, very wide. There'll be a lot of pressure on this young bowler. He's uh, got away with um, bowling in the semi-final quite well, but now the pressure's really on him, and he's a young man who I think is a man to watch for the future. Let's see how he's gonna handle this type of pressure. 
and that's out Alan Mott catching it off the back netting and the bowling chain worked as if will be well pleased now Richard Ellison taking a wicket with his second ball the first one being a wide and Alan Mott just diving to his right to take a fairly easy catch for him in both hands this is an excellent delivery from Ellison after his wide loosener just on off stump taking the outside edge of Ken McEwan's bat and Alan not taking a very fine catch behind the wicket so that's the breakthrough that Kent needed and uh, we've seen a new batsman come to the wicket now Stuart Turner now this is one of the all-rounders in the Kent side in the Essex side Stuart Turner a tremendous one-day cricketer probably one of the best in the country bowls his heart out is a fine striker of the ball and uh, he is a, an exponent a fine exponent of one-day cricket coming in at number four in the eighth over a 670 for two off the mark to that full toss from Ellison two to Turner He'll be trying to give the strike to Brian Hardy as much as he can because Brian's the man who's in and playing very well. Oh. Hardy again looking for the straight drive but just too short. more to Hardy hitting the backboard now there's uh, an interesting difference uh, in this competition there's a possibility for a player to win a very good prize that mini metro suspended from the roof if a player hits the ball through that uh, black hole in the middle of the board he wins the mini metro that's in the air and caught by Chris Cowdery again in the same position at backward point the exact position he caught Graham Gooch and that off the outside edge of Stuart Turner's bat so what a tremendous over from Richard Ellison here's the ball very sim similar dismissal to Graham Gooch is just trying to glide the ball to the back wall but he just hits it straight to Cowdery at that short third man position which has been the the most important position in this co indoor competition now a new bowler it's Graham Dilley who had trouble in the semi-final controlling the ball and uh, indeed particularly on Saturday in the group matches and in the last one in particular when he couldn't control it at all he bowled about five or six wides in one over but he started off well that was very straight Essex now 74 for three we're in the ninth over and there's the uh, the Lord the Lords of Sussex the pavilion there with all the members in the upper tiers of the balcony full house up there oh and there he was looking, he's been looking for that straight drive and that's the first six of the innings the ball bouncing inside the boundary there and a fine shot from Brian Hardy that's the most difficult shot to play indoors the straight drive back past the bowler and it counts for six runs fielded by Cowdery and a lot will um, a lot of Kent's effort here will be determined by how Dilly bowls. Very much so. He's been slightly disappointing for a, an England bowler in this competition. He's got to learn to bowl it right on line and length. Another good three. shot. Brian Hardy giving him three. Graham's, Graham's coming to a, a bit of a um, problem in his career and he's come come to a crossroads and 
he's going to have to sort out his bowling technique in the near future. Going for the quick single, leg by that was, putting Lily on the pad. So he's not yet off the mark. Yes, you just heard some expert advice from one very much uh, current England fast bowler. Who just knows what we do without him, Bob Willis, offering advice to a younger aspirant. It would certainly be a great help to the England squad if if Graham could regain his form. He's a very very fast bowler, but he must learn to bowl the ball exactly where he wants to, and not where the batsman wants to. It's uh, Richard Ellison going to take up the attack now. And he had a very promising first over indeed. Right on the spot, first ball of his second over. Essex now 85 for three in the ninth over. It's interesting to see young all-rounders emerging, isn't it? I mean, another one is, D is D Derek Prindle, Pringle of Essex, who's the captain of Cambridge University this season. He started off tremendous run with the bat. He can't bowl because he's got a, some niggling injury. It doesn't allow him to bowl, but there are one or two young all-rounders coming through. Yes, Derek Pringle certainly one, and also Ian Gregg, who plays for Sussex, trying to emulate his uh, brother's feats and force his way into the England side. Two runs there to Alan Lee. That gets him off the mark. Brown Hardy on 45 now and there's only 150 been scored in the whole of the competition so far and that was scored by John Barkley, the Sussex captain playing against Glamorgan another shy at the wickets but uh, Lily again started off, he backed up extremely well, he was well past the stumps by the time the ball got there anyway so two Brian, more to Hardy Br Brian Hardy certainly is a superb runner and he's made singles out of balls that have just trickled four or five yards from his bat. He really has performed excellently for Essex in the whole competition. He's also bowled pretty well. Another occasional bowler who's done a very good, good job indoors for his county. And dropping just short of Cadre but hitting. Ah, oh, what a magnificent run out. Cadre going for the catch, dropping just short of him but being quick enough of mind and body to shy at the stumps. So Lily is run out by Cowdery for two. We were just talking earlier about the importance of that position at short third man. Here the ball goes off the outside edge to Chris Cowdery in that position. Brian Hardy sees that it's gone to him, sends back the batsman and look at that for an athletic piece of fielding and a direct hit and no close call for the umpire there. He was absolutely miles out. So yet another illustration of what an extraordinary game cricket is. Kent being absolutely delighted to get Graham Gooch out in the first over for three. And then we saw a marvellous stand between Hardy and McEwen. And it looked as if Essex were very much on top. And here they are, 89 for four. And John Lever, the new batsman, at number six. So just one batsman to come after this. The pendulum certainly swung back Kent's way now partly due to this young man, Richard Ellison's bowling. He's uh, certainly performing well, coming into John Lever. And that'll be a wide. Don't, don't they call that an ag agricultural shot, Neil? Yahoo, I think. John Lever pointing up the, uh, pointing up the arena. He's looking to hit it into this netting, high up and straight. did him easily. That, that moved uh, very late and a long way. He didn't fancy that at all. No, player of uh, John's ability with the bat had no danger of getting an edge there. I know you won't mind me uh, saying that about him. You would have hit it straight for six, of course. Ellison to Lever. <laughs> and getting an edge. And he gets two runs for it. I don't think... Uh, 
John Lever knew what quite what was happening there at all. But at least it's in the book. He got two runs. He's off the mark. And so that uh, is 10 overs bowled. And Essex on 92 for four. Brian Hardy has 47. We're coming now to the climax of this Essex innings. And it'll be Graham Dilley's duty to try and restrict the run rate and try and keep Essex down to about 105 runs in their innings total. Bowling out a lever. And that, yes, I think lever reckoned that was a wide, but uh, umpire Ray Julian decided against it. Reckon he could have got a back to it. Alan Lott had to go a long way down the leg side to stop that. Richard Ellis has been brought in a couple of yards at uh, square leg. Straight to Cowdery. And I think John Lever's tactic here must be to either try and take the quick single to give Hardy the strike or, or to have a, an almighty belt. It's one or the other. Yeah, John Lever's got a problem on his hands now with very few balls remaining in the innings. He's got to get that scoreboard ticking over again. And Dilly giving him very little chance at this stage. Graham making the ball swing quite appreciably, first to the offside and then down the leg side, and Alan not needing to do all those loosening up exercises to be able to gather the ball cleanly. That is a wide, and I don't think Graham Dilly was very happy with that, so that's, uh, I would say, 15 all. Dilly reckoning that that ball was very cross indeed actually. I reckon that, that ball was close enough to the batsman, to the bats for the batsman to be in a position to hit it. The umpire deciding against it. And in fact Ray Julian, the umpire, is now having a word with him. He's giving him his piece of tape, I think, for his bowling mark. And Lever at last managing to get a bat on it. Gets two runs, the ball hitting the board at the back of the stumps. And in fact, it's a, it's a piece of uh, elastoplast which is uh, falling onto the floor. And Dilly has placed it over John Lee. That won't stop John Lee talking, that's for certain. No, this Essex side really are a, a bunch of comedians and they really enjoy playing their cricket very much indeed. And John Lever is one of their... Uh, Clown princes. Dilly now to Hardy. Hardy running down the wicket. That's a wide. Yes, the, the king of farce in the Essex County Cricket Club undoubtedly is Ray East, who uh, has appointed himself manager of the Essex indoor side for this competition. Very proud of his boys. He's the left arm spinner. Part of the Field East combination. And another tremendous catch by Chris Cardley in that backward point position. Brian Hardy trying to move the score along, having scored 47 with a chance of being the second player to get to 50 in this competition. Very well caught by Chris Cardley. It's a marvellous, marvellous innings coming to an end here. Brian Hardy trying to play that dab shot on the offside and Cowdery's taken another fine catch diving away to his right. No, no question that the uh, pressure was on Brian Hardy because uh, John Lee was finding it very difficult to, uh, to get any runs at all at the other end. The ball swinging quite alarmingly from Graham Dilly's arm. The new batsman is David East the wicketkeeper. He's no relation to Ray East, in fact, although he's known around the county as uh, Ray East's grandson. He's the very young wicketkeeper who took over from Neil Smith and has kept his place in the side. And now with one over to go, Essex are 96 for five with the last pair at the wicket. There's Ray East on Keith Fletcher's left. Ellison to, Le to Lever and very well fielded by Underwood and he's run out. Another magnificent field piece of fielding by Kent, this time by Derek Underwood. 
Lever going for six, the straight drive. Underwood diving to his left and getting the ball to the stump somehow. John Lever playing this and thinks he's lifted his sides total by six runs, but a magnificent dive by Derek Underwood there. You see him on his back and look at that piece of fielding. He throws it into the bowler who whips the bails off and John Lever, you just see his bat there in the picture and he hasn't made his ground. So the end of the Essex innings, they'd looked very much in the driving seat at one stage, but now this match is really wide open. Gooch was caught Cowdery, bowled Tavare for three. Hardy caught Cowdery, bowled Dilly for 47. McEwen caught Not, bowled Ellison 25. Turner caught Cowdery, bowled Ellison two. Lilly was run out for two, and Lever was also run out for two. David East was the not out batsman at the end. And uh, Essex finishing with 96 for 6, 96 all out in effect, in the last over of the innings. So, will 96 runs then be enough for Essex to take the trophy, or will Kent find enough runs to overtake them and beat them? We'll find out in just a couple of minutes. So, welcome back then to the Brighton Centre, with Kent needing 97 runs to beat Essex and win the Wadham Stringer Indoor Cricket Trophy. In fact, they made a pretty slow start, scoring just 33 off the first five overs for the loss of Chris Tavare. And that was mainly thanks to the excellent bowling of Graham Gooch, making up for his batting disappointment. In fact, his figures were one wicket for 12 runs off three overs. So there we are after five overs. It's 33 for one. Remember, they require a total of 97 to win. And they now need just over one and a half runs per over to win this match. And we have a new bowler and it's going to be John Lever to bowl his first ball to Cowdery. Another fine piece of fielding by Hardy. Saving a run there. If that had hit the board, it would have been three runs. It was, it was only two. He'll have a couple of grazes on his legs after that effort. So John Lever making the absolute maximum of this run up. He starts right back by the boards. And the pressure perhaps getting a bit to Richard Ellison. This is a lovely shot from behind the wicket. You see the ball swing from away from Ellison and he really is a, a long way from that. The bat, the bat a long way from his body and he, he, he can't handle this swinging ball very well at all. And that going to uh, John Lever's right hand, his wrong hand, they're, they're thinking about a second run, he's just back! And that'll be three runs, one for the overthrow, but that is a very good example of what can happen in this one-day cricket, because the ball went to uh, John Lever's wrong hand, he, he'd been left-handed, had a shy at the wicket, it went for overthrows, but Ellison was prepared to go back for the second run. Now, if he had gone, Cowdery would have been out half the length of the pitch, I should think. So that was a good decision by Cowdery. Yeah, John Lever unfortunately penalised there for a fine piece of fielding. No one could back up his throw and they got the extra run. Kent now 38 for one in the sixth over, just approaching the halfway mark, looking for a total of 97 to win. We've got wickets in hand, so this match really is wide open, but perhaps not so much now with that marvellous catch by Stuart Turner. Cowdery going down the wicket, trying to hit a behind spear on the leg side, and a fine catch by Stuart Turner. An in-swinger from John Lever, Chris Cowdy coming down the wicket, trying to pick it up on the leg side. And Stuart Turner taking a lovely catch there above his head, goalkeeper style, and falling backwards. Now, this could be the crucial moment in this match, because Azif Iqbal, the Kent captain, is the new batsman. And he is a naturally aggressive player, and he'll be looking to increase the scoring rate and uh, this is a crucial moment. Yes, Asif played so well 
in the semi-final and he's one of the few players in this indoor competition who's been managing to get runs from the straight drive and he's looking for it straight away but it hit the roof it's a therefore a dead ball but as uh, i was explaining earlier when we had that shot of the roof if in fact uh, it had been caught he would have been out but it's a dead ball and there are no runs scored there so at the halfway mark kent are 38 for two ellison is 14 not out and uh, as he has yet to score so the run rate required 1.63 runs per ball uh, at this stage in the essex innings essex was 61 for one after six overs so comparatively speaking kent are way behind that was a great bit of uh, luck for Kent, and it might be just what they needed. If that ball hadn't have hit the roof, I see if it would have been caught out first ball. So we're at the halfway mark now, and Essex must be favourites at this at this time. And we now see Stuart Turner taking up the attack to Richard Ellison. who as if wanted the run Ellison said no so they're living on their nerves at the moment Kent a bit very conscious they've got to move the score along but at the same time conscious that an awful lot depends on as if Iqbal and he knows it too Turner to Ellison well wide but extremely well stopped by David East literally running to his left to take that ball see it from the batsman's point of view you get two runs there Lily with the throw and Gooch backing up the Essex fielding is um, getting a little bit uh, nerve-wracking at the moment they've been shying at the stumps with regu regularity but uh, they've been lucky on occasions that they've had people backing up Turner to Azif, outside the off stump and a wide, and Turner not too happy with that. Not too happy with that at all, because Azif did fence at that ball outside the off stump. But the umpire, as in all things, the final arbitrator. Oh, and he's played on! Trying to play a ball outside the off stump, round the corner on the leg side, and getting an inside edge and playing on. So that's the wicket that Essex wanted. As he out for North. An out swinger from Stuart Turner. As he trying to play it on the leg side, gets an inside edge there onto his middle stump, which rocks back. And that might be the moment that sends this trophy to Essex. So there's the score in the seventh over, 42 for three, needing 97. There's a well-known old saying, cometh the hour, cometh the man. Now, could it be Alan Knott? As Ellison still not out at the other end. But Kent really up against it now. Turner bowling two not. Notty wanting the run and Ellison saying no quite rightly because Lily moves very, very quickly from his position there, just backward of the wicket on the offside. Alan Knott usually likes to have a look at the bowling before playing his strokes, but obviously in this competition, there only being 12 overs, he's going to have to get on with it straight away, which isn't his natural game. Good ball from Turner swinging into the batsman Lake late. Leg by is signalled. Two more to the score, 44 for three now in the seventh over. What an amazing character Alan Knott is. He's always on the move. Look at him now, touching his toes, stretching his legs, always on the move. One of the fittest cricketers around. Straight to Graham Gooch. 
Close in there on the offside, so a very good over by Stuart Turner. Getting the wicket that they really needed. One for two in his first over. So Brian Hardy has bowled two. Graham Gooch has bowled his ration of three overs, taken one for 12. And John Lever's bowled one over, taken one for five. So the Essex bowler's very much on top at the moment. But uh, more tactics here by Graham Gooch. He's taken uh, Lever off, and Brian Hardy's coming back on to finish his, his stint. This is his third over. Not having a quick look around the field, seeing where the gaps are. Hardy with three on the offside and two on the leg side. Straight to Lily. Straight to McEwen, at mid off. Alan not attempting to capitalise on this uh, over from Brian Hardy, but so far not being able to pierce the field. And there's Ray East, the Essex manager. He's delighted. He's thrilled. Straight to Gooch. And the Essex fielders right on their toes now. They're going to stop everything if it's humanly possible. See the tension on Alan Knott's face there. Got a full toss, that's gratuitous. Gets him off the mark, three runs. That's brave of Graham Gooch to bring uh, Hardy back on after his second over. And got 15 off it and this could be a run out oh he missed a stunt by a whisker and David he's falling over as he got to the wicket so a bit of luck there for Kent they get two runs there taking Kent now to 49 for three we're in the eighth over these are the sort of risks that Kent have got to take now because they're falling behind the required rate all the time for another very quick one oh, and Brian Hardy the right, wrong side of the stumps there but this might have hit but I think Alan Mott would have been in so a very good over that by Hardy and that was a brave move by Gooch to bring him back because uh, that one over that was worth 15 to Kent looked as if it just might be turning the tide at that stage that was a very good one so he finishes up three overs naught for 22 the run rate required is going up all the time almost two runs now required per ball eight overs four to go and Essex needing to take three wickets and Kent needing to score a total of 97 they need another 36 therefore another 46 I beg your, beg your pardon another 46 to win this match Two more there, 53 for three. The batsmen to come, Graham Dilly at six and Derek Underwood at seven. It's a judge not to be a wide, close enough to the batsman for him to be able to play a shot. Poor Richard Ellison hasn't seen much of the strike recently. He found problems with Graham Gooch swinging the ball at him and now Stuart Turner's doing the same thing, making scoring extremely difficult. As he did then. Stuart Turner, both those balls going down the leg side. He's only got two fielders on the leg side. Three on the offside, so if Ellison can get hold of one, there are runs runs to make on the leg side he's got two of them there fielded by McEwen 
55 for three. Look at the concentration on that face. Going for the big one, and it's over the top. Over the top, and it's three runs. It didn't actually go straight enough to score four, but he gets three, and this is what Kent have got to do. They've got to go for the big straight hit. 58 for three. Two more runs to Ellison, and that's the end of another good over from Stuart Turner. 60 for three. So that's uh, nine overs bowled, and applause for umpire Lloyd Budd, who is going to the square leg position. So that's the last time we'll see him in the 1982 Wadham Stringer Trophy competition, standing at the bowler's end. And out comes Ray Julian, the other umpire. He'll be umpire for the last three overs with Kent now re needing 37 runs to win in the last three overs at a run rate of over two runs per ball. It looks like uh, Essex's match at this stage, but uh, there was a vast turnaround when they were batting earlier. And I think uh, Alan Knott's the key batsman now for Kent. Essex were 85 for three at this stage after nine overs. Kent 60 for three and Lever bowling to Ellison. And pitching this side of the no ball line, so that's a gratuitous run to Kent. 61 for three. John Lever has been so used to bowling in these tight situations for Essex in one day cricket and I doubt whether he'll let them down now. Now if he catches out, he's out. Yes, he, it's Turner again. It's that man, Turner. Each side has had one. Cowdery for Kent. Tur now Turner for Essex. Catching Ellison off the back netting there. A magnificent catch. Shades of frustration here for poor Richard Ellison. He, he struggled with the bat in this innings and it flies off the edge. Over Stuart Turner's head. He turns to catch it off the netting. Have it to dive full length. Two-handed catch. What a marvellous piece of cricket. And another Essex fielder with grazed elbows, no doubt. He hit the deck very hard then. And Stuart Turner, two fine catches by him. Three altogether in this innings. He's got a hat-trick of catches, as did Chris Cowdery for Kent. And the new batsman is Graham Dilley, coming in at number six. We'll all remember Graham's tremendous efforts at uh, Headingley last year with Ian Botham when uh, they put on a magnificent partnership when Ian Botham lashed the ball all over Leeds and Graham made a super 50 at the other end. So 61 for four, 36 required, two overs to go after this one. It'll be two and this is a run out, and well fielded by Lily, covering very well indeed. So that's now 34 required of 16 balls. And now the field moves round for the left-handed Dilly. John Lever going back, right back to the, his mark up by the boards there. That must be a wide. Graham Dilly there, his favorite shots are usually uh, in the air but that's not the technique in the indoor arena you've got to keep the ball down because the fielder has so much time to run and catch the ball even if it hits the side netting good delivery leaving Dilly leaving him about, in about three mines too yes the, the light in fact is very good here isn't it it's, it's marvellous light to field in this is experience exemplified. John Lever firing down a lovely 
fast swinging delivery. And Delhi off the mark with three. So 30 runs required now, or 14 balls. Just one batsman to come, Derek Underwood. It's really all down to Alan Knott. And he's concentrating as if his life depended on it. Oh, and he went for the big hit. And is totally bowled by John Lever, hitting the middle stump. So Kent really now are rocked right back on their heels. John Lever dead center look at that bales in the air Alan Knott's desperate shot all to no avail and the stumps are spread eagle so Derek Underwood the new batsman coming in at number seven for Kent he's also having a look round so the last pair at the wicket 67 for five And the end of a fine over by John Lever. And Kent now require 30 runs off the last two overs. That's a virtually impossible target now with batsmen of the limited ability of Underwood and Dilly. And what a fine over that was from John Lever. Stu Stuart Turner, who's to bowl now. He had a super first over and Graham Dilly's got a great job on his hands now. And there's Brian Luckhurst who uh, isn't looking too happy and Maurice Fenner, the Kent City, looking decidedly unhappy. As Eve, the Kent captain. And there is uh, Keith Fletcher and Ray East, obviously delighted with the position that Essex are in. And here comes Turner to Dilly. Now, if he catches that off, the he does he? Is that out or not? He's asking for the catch. He's looking at the umpire, Ray Julian's not happy. Alan Lilly literally collapsed into the netting there under the scoreboard, but the catch is not allowed. So that is uh, two runs to Graham Dilly. So that brings the target down to 28 now in 11 balls. Turner to Underwood, looking for a single, but it certainly is not a single there. So it looks very much as if uh, Essex are going to take the £3,000 winner's prize, with Kent taking £2,000 as runners-up. Unless a cricketing miracle happens here. And I think we must pay tribute, Bob, to Graham Gooch's captaincy, because uh, he and Hardy opened the bowling. He kept both Turner and Lever back, and it certainly worked out. Yes, it's been a super, superb professional performance by Essex. And there's Derek Underwood being caught off the netting to bring this game to an end. So Essex all out, Kent all out rather, 70 for 6. And another catch there, off the netting. This time it was Alan Lilly. Turner having caught three catches altogether in the innings and Underwood caught Lily bowled Turner for naught so uh, Essex have won the 1982 Wadham Stringer Trophy by 26 runs and there is the happy side John Lieber who bowled so well Ken McEwen who batted so well for them and there we see that uh, in the Essex innings Brown Hardy was undoubtedly the leading batsman with 47. McEwen, the only other batsman to get into double figures, surprisingly, with 25. And Kent, really never in the hunt. There was a stage when Cowdery and Ellison were together when they were just in with a chance. But then the wicket started falling, and at the end of the day, when the wicket of Alan Knott fell, it was all over for Kent. Now we can see the Wadham Stringer trophy. There it is. Silver cricket bat. Magnificent trophy. And the winning team 
waiting now for the award presentation. There's Stuart Turner, who not only bowled so well, but caught those three catches. Graham Gooch, the captain. He's a, he's a happy man. John Spencer, who is the cricket consultant, the former Sussex player. But, but let's, look a look, let's just have another look at how that last wicket fell. Derek Underwood, just prodding forward really outside the off stump, hoping to get a run somewhere. And Alan Liddy, waiting for the ball to bounce back into his hands off the netting. Congratulations, Graham. That was a fantastic achievement. You always seem to be winning that match. Um, well, the game's never won until the uh, last ball or last man's out. Stuart Turner, very much a hero there, with three catches at the end. Yeah, he, he played well, but uh, we owe a lot to our manager, Ray East, who really gave us a <laughs> tremendous team talk last night at uh, three o'clock in the morning. Can you, give a, can you give away some of the secrets that uh, happened at that meeting? Yeah, um, Ray bought 15 pints every round. <laughs> Why is he not out here? With the you should be celebrating with you, shouldn't he? Well, this is an ideal sort of game to come down here but not play. <laughs> but um, I'm pleased with the boys because uh, they tried well and uh, we weren't very good in practice. Uh, but yeah, that just shows you. Your bowling at the beginning seemed to be uh, a fairly vital factor. You seem to be swinging it quite a lot. Um, yeah, well, uh, just uh, for the bowling here all the time, weren't I? Right, I wonder if we can have a word with John Lever. John, you uh, had a vital part to play there in the end with uh, the vital wicket of Alan Knott. Yes, he missed it. It was, uh, I don't know where it would have gone <laughs> if he had hit it. I think up there in that car, I think. What is the secret of this uh, game? Oh, that's a very hard question. <laughs> We've just turned up and played. I think uh, the batting, the nudging around, uh, it's not about big hitting. It's about uh, pushing it finding the gaps and then when you bowl obviously you must try and bowl straight and that ball swings quite a bit and sometimes it's not too easy to control. Right that's a word with Stuart Turner another hero three catches Stuart. Yes uh, quite amazing they call me the old man on the side but uh, I can still uh, turn on a few things here and there. Ha have you and Ray East and Graham Gooch and Keith Fletcher decided what you're going to do with the three thousand pounds? Uh, probably give a lot to the tax man and buy some more lager. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have a quick word with David East? <laughs> David, um, your wicketkeeping was uh, another feature of the match. You must have enjoyed it, being one of the younger members of the side. Yes, very much. I did enjoy it. It's, what? Uh, the ball swinging around all over the place, and it means you have to move around a great deal. And I enjoyed it. It's marvellous. What do you think the turning point of the final was? Uh, I think when Chris Cowdery got out at the beginning and Chris Tavare, so the, the, uh, the two Ken openers, I think that turned it for us then. As far as I was concerned. Quick word with Alan Lilly, another younger member of the side, Alan. <laughs> fielding obviously was a, a vital factor. Kent fielded very well, but uh, you probably fielded even better in the final. Yes, we did. It was uh, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to win. So then a really marvellous match in the final of the Wadham Stringer Trophy. We hope very much you've enjoyed our coverage of this uh, indoor event. Don't forget, more excellent sport coming your way in the Friday Sports Show next Friday on TVS at 6.30. We leave you, though, tonight with the new champions of indoor cricket, Essex. for five in the 38th